guys in the previous lecture that is the lecture number 28 we talk about the natural computation or line computation we have covered this part now in this lecture we will start class a computation that is the load computation which comes under the category of force computation okay so let us move to the first slide class a computation is known as load computation i am exp i will explain you what is load computation now let us take one dc voltage source is connected with thyristor okay and one load is connected having resistance r this is load okay and this l and c are known as commutating element means these two are responsible for turning of the scr as we know that the turn off of scr is not in our hand it depends on the supply or either I have to attach a commutation circuit to turn off the SCR. So this LC element are the commutating element which is used to turn off the SCR. Now let us see how this circuit is turning off the SCR. Let us say this SCR, I am triggering this SCR by supplying gate current. Let us say IG is not equal to zero. I am supplying this uh, gate current. So this SCR will be turned off and it is it will be replaced by short circuit okay now when it will be replaced by short circuit then i can find the response i naught so by using laplace transform what will be the i naught of s the i naught of s will be vs upon s r plus ls plus 1 upon cs so finally you will get vs upon s square plus r upon l into s plus 1 by lc i think it will be vs upon l okay so finally the equation of i naught of s you will get bs upon l into s square plus r upon l s plus 1 by lc so characteristics equation of this i naught of s will be the characteristics equation will be s square plus r upon l into s plus 1 by lc okay so from here i can find the zeta we know that 2 zeta omega n is nothing but r upon l right if you will match this characteristic equation with second order equation that is s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square then i will get 2 zeta omega n is equal to r upon l so i can write like this zeta is equal to r upon 2 omega n into l now we know that in order to make this system under damped the zeta will lie in between 0 to 1 okay means zeta less than 1 so i can write like this r upon 2 omega n into l must be uh, less than 1 so i can write that is equal to r must be less than 2 omega n into l okay then only this system will be under damped means we have to make the zeta in in between 0 to 1 then only i will get the response like this i have to make the response under damped this is the under damped response okay and the frequency of this under damped system will be omega r which is equal to omega n under root 1 minus zeta a square okay so in order to make this system under damped i have to make r upon 2 omega n into l less than 1 that is equal to r must be less than 2 omega n into l then only i will get the response that is the current like this so from the equation i got r less than 2 omega n l put omega n is equal to 1 by under root lc we know that omega n is equal to 1 by under root lc that we have seen so r will come out to be r less than 2 under root l by c so square both side r square must be less than 4 l by c so in order to make the system under damped zeta must be less than 1 and which has the condition r square must be less than 4 l upon c so by choosing proper value of l and c we can make this system under damped so in under damped system the response of current you will get like this only okay r is the known factor and we will take the proper value of lc lc is the commutating element so we will take the proper value of l and c such that r square must be less than 4 l upon c this is in our hand so response i will get in under damped system like this now here thyristor is connected okay so here you can see that in the current waveform the current is positive from 0 to pi and after pi the current is going to be negative here i can say that anode current is 0 at omega t is equal to pi anode current is 0 so the moment when anode current will be less than holding current this thyristor will be 
off and when thyristor will be off then it cannot be turned on again it will be turned on again only by supplying gate current okay so at omega t is equal to pi after pi the current is going to be negative so thyristor won't allow the negative current means this thyristor will go into the off state in this way we can turn off the scr by using commutating element l and c such that the system work in under damped means zeta must lie in between 0 to 1 so if i will ask you what is the turn on time of this scr see this thyristor is on from 0 to pi only okay so i can write like this omega r into t is equal to pi i already told you this current waveform run at the ringing frequency omega r that is given by omega n under root 1 minus zeta square so what is the turn on time of this scr the turn on time of this scr will be omega r into t is equal to pi so t will come out to be pi by omega r that can be written as pi by omega n under root 1 minus zeta square where zeta we can find by characteristic equation got it so in this way we can turn off the scr by making the circuit work in under damped condition if the circuit will be not in under damped system then the current equation you will not get like this positive negative positive negative so it will not be turn off so to turn off this scr the circuit must work in the under damped condition means zeta must lie in between 0 to 1 so in this way we can turn off the scr that is the class a commutation so these type of load commutation the application of this load commutation are used and it is used in inverter we will see when rlc load is connected in inverter then their load commutation is possible we will see in the inverter section till now you should know this much only okay so that's all about this lecture in the next lecture we will start class b commutation that is the current commutation and in previous lecture i told you that go through the lecture number six there i derived the il of t that is equal to icp sin omega naught t where icp is equal to vs under root c by l and omega naught is equal to 1 by under root lc this is the discharging diode lc circuit in which we found the response that is the lecture number 06 so go through this lecture before starting class b commutation okay so if you guys understood the concept then please like this video and subscribe to this channel for doubt solving you can join our facebook group thanks for watching this video